If you're dealing with higher levels of osteoarthritis, joint pain, or you're right in the middle of a flare-up and are just dealing with higher pain levels than usual, in this video you will learn the top five things that you can do to immediately reduce joint pain and take the edge off. Because when you are dealing with osteoarthritis pain, there are some things that are going to work for you in the long term. And this primarily includes exercise and movement. But when you're dealing with high levels of joint pain, those things can be really hard to do. And it can be really hard to be motivated to get up and exercise when your joints are just throbbing. So these are five simple at home things that you can do to take that edge off. And a lot of them actually work almost immediately. So here we go. All right, so we are gonna go through the top five things that you can do at home in order to take the edge off your joint pain so you can get up, get moving, and get adventuring. So if we haven't met before, my name's Alyssa. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I'm an osteoarthritis specialist. And I help people all across the country adventure with osteoarthritis because it is possible to be active and stay active despite a diagnosis. So these simple things have worked for so many of my clients and I want to equip you with the same information. Now, please note that each of these five things may not totally work for you and that's okay. That's why I'm telling you five of them. Choose one or two that seem to work the best for you and let's run with those. So we're gonna get started with number one. Number one is one of the more obvious ones and then we're gonna get into the more not so obvious ones. But one of the more obvious ones is heat and ice. So I get a lot of questions about should I use heat? Should I use ice? How long? All these sorts of things. When it comes to heat and ice for arthritis, honestly, I find a lot of people having more luck with heat than ice. And if we look at kind of how they work, heat relaxes muscles. A lot of times when you're in pain, our muscles like to tense up. This can lead to more pain. It can lead to stiffness in particular with osteoarthritis. And so it also decreases the stress and decreases some of that anxiety that comes with pain. Heat can be very relaxing. And especially when it comes to low back and neck, hand osteoarthritis, and even knee pain, hip pain, heat can be magical when it comes to finding that immediate pain relief. I have a lot of people who come home from work or come home from a long day and use heat to kind of help induce that relaxation. Also, the same thing can go for a warm bath. Be careful if you have neuropathy and some other sensation issues. Obviously, you don't want it to be too hot, but a warm bath with Epsom salts can kind of be the same way. So you can use either one of those to induce relaxation. Now ice on the other hand works more to numb the pain sensors and it can thus dull or reduce your pain. Ice can be more helpful in times when you're dealing with sharp pain, whereas heat may be more effective if you're dealing with some dull pain sensations. Ice you don't want to use for a prolonged period of time. You also don't want it to be too cold. This can impact our nerves and can impact some sensation. So keeping it short, I would say anywhere between up to 10, 15 minutes. If you have some skin sensation issues like neuropathy, it may be a little bit less than that. But keep it short, short durations, and then take 20, 30 minutes off, and then you can kind of repeat that cycle if that sharp pain continues to exist. So heat and ice are dependent on how you're feeling, how your body reacts. Some people like heat, like ice better, and that's just how they are. But heat tends to be a little bit more effective when it comes to osteoarthritis. Now, number two is actually some topical pain creams, and these are so common when it comes to finding pain relief without having to take pills. There are a couple different things. So I have a couple here. If you look at the ingredients of what makes them pain relieving creams. So I have two here that both use menthol as their active ingredient as far as pain control. So how does menthol help with pain reduction and pain relief? Well, it essentially cools the skin, almost kind of in the same thing as ice, but it's not at that colder temperature. 
So it's kind of a dull cold, but essentially it distracts your skin and kind of distracts your brain. It creates this cooling system on your skin and can also desensitize some of those pain receptors. And that's also in the form of icy hot and in the form of biofreeze. These all kind of fall in the same category. And that is with menthol as the active ingredient. Now, the other one, most commonly is Voltaren. And Voltaren is a anti-inflammatory topical treatment. Now is over the counter. Its active ingredient is called diclofenic sodium. And it's actually an NSAID and it works to reduce the pain receptors that tend to kind of set off or transmit these pain sensations. And so it works a little bit more physiologically under the skin. That's kind of complicated, but it essentially reduces the pain by just reducing the amount of pain sensors that are near your joint. Now, all of these things work in a local area. So say if you have knee arthritis, then rubbing that on your knee is going to locally help that area. With these though, you do want to be careful of some skin conditions, make sure that you're not going to have an adverse reaction to it. You also want to make sure that this is not going to interact with any other medical conditions you have, although you're not taking a pill. Sometimes it does get into the skin and can get into the blood. So please make sure that you are clear to use any of these, even though they are over the counter. Number three is actually compression. And compression can be really, really powerful, especially if you have knee osteoarthritis. Compression, essentially, like in a compression sleeve like this one, so this one is a soft sleeve that goes over your knee. They also make some for our elbows, they make some for hands. This essentially is working to dull the pain receptors. So now your receptors are feeling that compression, they're feeling that tightness against the skin, and they don't have time to transmit and feel pain. So it can work kind of as far as the pain topical creams go, that it kind of works as a distraction for those pain receptors. I personally really like these because there it really is no side effects other than maybe having an ill-fitting one, but there really are no side effects and they're very, very inexpensive. I highly recommend, especially if you have knee or hand osteoarthritis, because it comes in the same glove form too that I know a lot of people have had success with. So both of these compression sleeves can be really, really helpful whether you're doing activity or when you're just noticing a lot of pain, these can be helpful. Now we know that with movement, you can also improve blood flow and you can also increase your effects of pain relief. So I also like to pair these with movement too. I do have a blog post that's the top knee sleeves or knee compression sleeves for if you have knee osteoarthritis and I'm gonna put that link down below so you can check that out. It has all sorts of links and things. But I would highly recommend checking out a compression sleeve. Again, I just wanna make sure that they fit properly. You should not have a indent in your skin from this being so tight. So please make sure that it fits properly and that you do some measurements, but these can be very, very effective. I do like to stay away from the ones that have hard parts in them just because they can kind of change the way you move. Whereas these, they're soft and they don't necessarily inhibit movement. Okay, so now number four is massage. Massage can be, again, very powerful for osteoarthritis. There was one study that looked at actually full body massage. People were getting one massage a week and it actually was able to reduce pain, reduce stiffness, but also improve physical function. People were able to walk better, but they did notice that going and doing a massage once a week for a year, the results weren't as significant. So it's a great short-term solution, especially if you're dealing with flare-ups or you're dealing with a lot of pain, a lot of tension, a lot of stress from life events. Massage can be very, very helpful. Now, one of the things to look at though is if you need a full body massage or if you need just a local massage that you can do on your own. And that is totally up to you and does depend on your stress levels and what you're going through as far as other life events. 
And if you feel like you're carrying a lot of weight in your shoulders, a lot of neck or back arthritis can benefit from a full body massage. Not saying that knee arthritis and things can't, but it is definitely more of a global kind of systemic response to reduce stress, reduce anxiety, reduce all those things. There are some benefits to local massage though. So massage can decrease some stress hormones, it can improve blood flow, it can decrease stiffness, and it can reduce pain. There are a couple of ways that you can very easily do massage at home. One is simply using your hands. Now, obviously this is going to be a little bit easier, knee, maybe an ankle, hands. It actually was shown that massage to hands can reduce pain up to 57%, which is very exciting. So literally just using your hands. Now you can use some um, lotion or something to make it a little bit softer. Um, you can use some pain creams. You just want to make sure that you're not using so much of it um, because then that menthol and things can be a little bit intense. So I would recommend just using a lotion that you're not going to react to. Knees can work. It's not necessarily going as hard as you can. It's just kind of that gentle movement because it should not increase pain. And this also goes to some full body massages. It should not increase your pain. So they should not be super intense to the point where you have some bruising and you notice more pain. It should be gentle enough that you're improving that blood flow, getting that decreased stiffness, but not, you know, feeling really sore afterwards in the next day. Now, obviously it's going to depend because some people can handle much more pressure than others. And so definitely please, please, please communicate with your massage therapist because I don't want this to be counteractive for you. So we want to get the most benefit out of it we can. Now at home, you can use, so one of the things that I really like and um, talk to my clients about is using a soft ball. So you can use a tennis ball, you can use, this is just a yoga ball. Um, but it's soft, so you can kind of roll this on your skin. Um, it's a nice, gentle movement. Obviously, with a knee, you can kind of push into it a little bit more, get a little bit more pressure, um, but this can be really effective. You want to stay away from some like lacrosse balls and things unless you can handle a lot of pressure because sometimes those can be really hard and they can just give us too much pressure. You can also use a foam roll. Now again, we have to be careful with these too because sometimes when they have these nubs and things, they can be really intense. Also, the softness of it can be intense as well. So please make sure that you find a softer one to start with. Usually the softer ones are a little bit more expensive, but these foam rolls can be very effective. You can, you know, be on the floor or be on a firm surface and kind of roll on them. But you can also just take these and roll on your joints too, to the point where it's not as intense as if you are laying on it. These can be effective for knee arthritis, for hip arthritis, for low back arthritis, can help with some upper back mobility to help with your neck. I do have a video on some movements to use with a foam roll that I will put the link so that way you can see some ideas. But again, the goal is not to increase pain, it's to decrease pain and to help with that blood flow. So number five is isometric exercise. Now, you may have noticed that when you're dealing with pain, when you're dealing with a lot of stiffness, movement can help, but gentle movement. So a lot of times this is seated exercises, simply kicking your legs straight out and coming back, simply just kind of marching as you're sitting. There are a lot of very, very gentle exercises that can help reduce pain by improving blood flow, circulating some of those inflammatory cells out, and starting to decrease some of that stiffness. There is another type of exercise that can be helpful as far as pain relief almost immediately, and that is isometric exercise. So essentially what isometric exercise is, is you're contracting all of your muscles, but you're not necessarily moving. So for example, I have a video down here 
then I'm going to show you a straight leg raise. So you can do this on your bed, on a couch, you can do it on the floor if you can get back up. But this exercise right here, you're essentially lifting your leg up and holding it there, contracting all of those muscles, and this is going to help with pain relief. But you want to choose something that's not going to, again, increase pain, increase muscle cramping, and things like that. So I have another video that shows a little bit of an easier version of these, and both of these will be down in the description below so you can hear the instructions and follow along. This is one of the most effective exercises if you're dealing with high levels of knee osteoarthritis pain, especially if you have some patellofemoral arthritis going on, some kneecap pain, kneecap arthritis, or patellar tendon pain or stiffness, then this exercise right here can be really helpful. Now there are other exercises as far as it comes with neck isometrics, where essentially you're holding here, you're pushing to the side, at about 50% effort and then releasing and then repeating. I also have a video on that down below if you're dealing with neck pain. But these can be effective for all sorts of joints and there are lots of ways that you can complete isometric exercises. Shoulder is another one where you're standing at a wall and you're pushing your hand into the wall. If the wall is right here, you're pushing your hand into it. I also have a video on that that's going to run through some shoulder exercises, especially if you have neck pain, shoulder exercises, especially isometric, can be helpful. Essentially, you're trying to contract the muscles and then relax. A lot of times when you have high levels of pain, when you have stiffness, some muscles are overactive and some aren't as active as they need to be. So using these isometric exercises can actually be really, really powerful in terms of that short-term immediate pain relief. Now the goal of all five of these is to reduce pain so you can start to participate in some of these longer term benefits, especially exercise. Exercise is one of the most important things that you can do for your osteoarthritis pain. But if you're dealing with a lot of pain initially, exercise isn't going to be the most fun thing. So if you're looking for exercises to start with, I do have a four day challenge that's going to run you through four days of arthritis friendly exercises once we can reduce this initial pain and these initial flare ups. So use any of these five things that we discussed to help reduce your high levels or significant levels of Pain. This can work at night, in the morning, whenever you experience higher levels of pain. Experiment with a couple. Make sure that you find something that really truly works for you. I hope that this was helpful. Share this with anyone who could benefit from some osteoarthritis joint pain relief. And if you did find this video helpful, if you could hit that red subscribe button down below, that way you will get notifications when I do release new videos because I have lots more helpful arthritis tips where this came from. Thanks for watching.